Hey everyone, this is Joe again from Blockchain WTF. Do you remember the first time you heard about blockchain and cryptocurrency? My reaction was the same as many. I was both very intrigued but yet fascinated when it came to exploring my first purchase. The main emotions I felt were utter confusion and intimidation. But downloading your first wallet may seem like a daunting task, but if you know and understand your options, getting a wallet or running the blockchain software becomes possible for any user. First, let's go over a simple definition. You may have heard the term node before. All it means is a computer running blockchain software. There are two main types of nodes, and there are a couple of subtypes that fall under one of these two types of categories, a light client or a full node. The main difference actually lies in the construction of a public chain. The whole idea behind a blockchain is that each computer running the software, or node, has a complete record of all previous transactions. In order to get to a point where the node is functional, it first has to catch up with all the data history of the blockchain. And those are a lot of transactions to sync, and this is not a quick process. The first time I tried to run a full node, it took me over two days to sync to the chain. It was insanely frustrating, but there was another solution I yet have heard about. And that solution was light clients. Light clients allow you to use the blockchain, but do not require you to download the entire transaction history. Instead, these light clients only refer to a part of the transaction, which is a fraction of the data required to download compared to a full node. So there's not a long syncing process with light clients. I use light clients for my hot wallet or ready to spend wallet or when I simply just don't want to download the entire chain. It is important to note that a light client is referencing a trusted full node's copy of the blockchain. The effect is that users are allowed to transact on the blockchain without downloading the entire copy of a blockchain, which is no small file. The entire history of blockchain has to be downloaded and for Bitcoin at this moment is almost at 200 gigabytes worth of data transactions. Obviously, if you have a device that doesn't have that kind of memory or processing power, a full node really isn't an option for you. Instead, you're probably gonna to wanna to use a light client. Most mobile wallets are light clients. Most cell phones don't have memory to run a full node. Downloadable light clients are also available for computers. You may be thinking that light clients are the best way to interact with the blockchain, but there are some benefits to running a full node. Full nodes help process or validate transactions. They are like the supervisors of the network, so if you're interested in mining, you'll most likely have to be using a full node. These nodes also ensure security. If more people run full nodes, the network becomes more resilient and tougher towards malicious attacks. Full nodes contribute to the functionality of a network. By running a full node, you're helping support the network. There is an important subtype of full node, and that is a mining node. While running a node helps you secure the network, if you're looking to mine cryptocurrency, well then you're going to need to run a mining node instead. Like I said before, this is a type of full node, but in a proof of work consensus. A mining node requires a lot more processing power than a simple full node and can eat up a lot of your power supply very easily. Since each mining node is rushing to solve the same equation, miners often are competing and the way to get an edge of the competition is to increase your hashing power. More hashing power equals more mining rewards. The last distinction we will make is pretty network specific. Some networks use supervisory nodes that validate and process transactions. For example, Dash has master nodes. In order to run one of these nodes, you'll have to stake 100 Dash. Your node then has a responsibility of making sure every transaction process is valid. In return, master nodes are given a designated part of each block reward. So that's our breakdown of each type of node. Hopefully we helped you out figure out which type of node is right for you. Of course, for more information, be sure to check out the links and be sure to check us out at blockchain.wtf.